I'm Mark. And I'm Josh. And this is Alter Ego Comics TV for the week of October 7th, 2015. The biggest day in comics so far this year. <laughs> lots and lots of new comics this week, including several new Marvel number ones, lots of independent goodness, some a new weekly series from DC Comics, and, and a whole lot more. For those of you who don't know, we work at Alter Ego Comics in Lima, Ohio, and we read all of the new books the night before they hit the stand so that we can direct you towards comics that are awesome. And kicking off my list this week is Invincible Iron Man number one, written by Brian Michael Bendis, artwork by David Marquez, the team behind Miles Morales' Ultimate Spider-Man. And Marvel is telling us that this is essentially the flagship title for all new, all different Marvel. And by the time you get to the last page, you may realize why. Uh, that there is maybe some connection between Secret Wars and Iron Man that you probably don't want to miss. This is a new beginning for Tony Stark. Last time we saw Tony pre-Secret Wars, he was still uh, kind of mind-swapped or messed up from, was it Axis? Axis, yeah. Axis, where the good guys became bad and the bad guys became good, and Tony was still a good guy, really, but he was kind of a dick, but <laughs> more than usual. Um so this is a return to classic Tony Stark, but he's learned some things along the way, and he's trying to make a fresh start. Wouldn't we refer to drinking and being a dick Tony as classic Tony Stark, probably? Yeah, you know, this, uh, the, the superior Iron Man, <laughs> yeah. superior Tony was really bad. Uh, new suit of armor that is going to take some time to grow on me, <laughs> but uh, Marquez's artwork makes it worth it here. Uh, he's just... This guy is, is awesome. If you've never seen David Marquez's art, you really need to check this out. Uh, and Bendis is Bendis. Uh, he hasn't written a solo Tony book, uh, Iron Man book. He wrote Iron Man and New Avengers for many, many years. But it's great to see him shine, focusing strictly on Tony Stark. Uh, very nice cover stock, by the way, Marvel. The, I wish you all of your books had this cover stock. So it's completely worth it. You want to check out the beginning of all new, all different Marvel and start with Invincible Iron Man number one. Over on the other side of the aisle, we've got Batman and Robin Eternal number one. Uh, this is the uh, new weekly series focusing on the Bat family. Uh, and one thing I really liked about this is you don't have to have read any of the original Batman Eternal to follow it. Basically, this picks up where, uh, well, essentially where we are currently in the DC Universe. So Dick Grayson is a super spy. He's not Robin. Most of the world thinks he's dead. Bruce Wayne does not remember anything about being Batman or remember really anything about any of the Robins or the boys. Um, all he knows essentially is what Alfred has told him and the things he's seen in pictures and whatnot. Uh, so this is a team-up book with, at least in the first issue, we get all of the Robins, uh, about half the Batgirls, including Cassandra Cain, who has not really been used in the New 52 much at all, if at all. Uh, and, of course, the return of Harper Rowe, who is Bluebird or whatever, uh, which is just a beloved character from the Scott Snyder run. Uh, the book is written by Tinian and Snyder and uh, art by Tony Daniel. And it's this is a no-brainer. If you like Batman and Robin, you're going to check this out, and I think it, you'll enjoy it. Next up, another new, no, a new number one from Marvel. This time, Doctor Strange number one, written by Jason Aaron, who you may remember from some such small books as Star Wars over at Marvel and Thor over at Marvel, as well as his creator on work. Artwork by Chris Bacalo. Bachelo. Pick one and run with it. I don't know which one it is. So I know that there are, at least we have a lot of local fans that are into Bacalo's artwork, so they'll be thrilled to see this. And, and he's drawing Doctor Strange, which gives him a chance to draw all kinds of crazy, mystical, demon-y, funky stuff. Uh, I think Aaron's having a ball with this. He is doing... Uh, it, it feels a little bit like a cross between Peter Parker, Tony Stark, and Doctor Strange. Uh, Doctor Strange is kind of the narrator of the book, and he's you know, he talks about a typical Tuesday for him, and it sounds a little bit like Peter might be talking, or, or Tony. So it's it's more of a light-hearted Doctor Strange, and I think that this is probably meant to go along with uh, Benedict Cumberbatch's portrayal of Strange in the film next year. So if you want to learn some stuff about Doctor Strange before the Doctor Strange movie comes out next year, pick this one up. If you're a fan of Jason Aaron or Chris Bacalo, pick this one up. And I think it's a solid start. You know, I want to read more of this Doctor Strange. And he's back to back to normal. Doctor Strange has gone through kind of some mm -hmm. some changes over the recent years and it seems like he's 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 the Sorcerer Supreme again. He's got the eye of Agamotto. He hangs out with former mystical people like Doctor Voodoo and uh, oh, who are the other ones? 
He's supposed he's supposed to meet some people at a bar, and it's like all magic people, and he's running late. Anyway, <laughs> Doctor Strange is out. You should pick it up. Yeah, no, I really liked it. I thought it was almost uh, it had a little bit of a Constantine feel. Yeah. About you know magic, the cost of magic is a mm-hmm. big thing going on in the story, and uh, I you're right, it does feel a little different than Doctor Strange, but that's all in the head. Like the narration parts that are him essentially talking to the reader do feel a little different, but when he talks to characters in the world, it still sounds kind of like classic Doctor Strange, you know, little weird word structures. And I do want to point out, one of the best things about this issue is the recap at the beginning. Mm. Um, they've got words over pictures of previous issues of Doctor Strange, previous in- inner panels. So you've got Steve Ditko artwork in there. You've got, uh, I don't know if Paul Galassi did Doctor Strange, or I'm drawing a blank on who it was. Um, but it's it. If you've never read Doctor Strange before, all you need to know will be given to you in the first two pages of the book. Uh, next up from Image, we've got Saints Number One, uh, written by Sean Lewis, art by Benjamin Mackey, and this is a, a story. It's a new creator-owned series. It's uh, saints are being reborn in the world, and they're being reborn in some of the strangest places. Uh, the the main character of the book is sort of like a like a death metal groupie. Uh, following around some band that seems like they would have an umlaut in their name and probably dragons and pentagrams on the cover of their albums. Uh, and he teams, he meets up with other people who are having these visions, and they seem to be either reincarnations or new incarnations of classic saints. And the person behind all this is an angel. I'm not sure we know which one it is, but it's not one of the good ones, apparently, or at least not one that's still good. Uh, and it was fun and... I just remembered we're supposed to be doing lightning round instead of talk in depth about these books. So I'm going to kick it into high gear now. <laughs> Amazing Spider-Man. <laughs> yes, we do have to open the shop very soon. Amazing Spider-Man number one is no surprise on my list this week. Oversized and action-packed, written by Dan Slott, art by Giuseppe Camoncoli. Uh, plus, you get previews of all the Spider-related titles in the back of the book. Peter Parker is essentially Tony Stark now, but uh, without being rich. He's kept his salary at middle management level. He is now traveling all over the world with Parker in- Industries. Uh, the supporting players from Slot's previous run are still there. We get uh, Anna Maria. We get uh, his boss at Horizon. We get the supporting players at Horizon. We get Sanjay. You know, All the supporting players are there. But if this is your first introduction to Spider-Man, they do a very good job of setting things up, so you don't necessarily have to have read that stuff. I'm Super happy to see Dan Slott back writing a, a main Marvel Universe Amazing Spider-Man, and am really curious to see where this goes. I think we're going to see some corporate espionage. We're going to see Peter again all over the place. Oh, I should mention that much like the early days of Iron Man, Spider-Man is Peter Parker's bodyguard. So that is how Peter explains why Spider-Man is always where Peter is. But he also has uh, roped in some of his friends, possibly, to dress up as Spider-Man when they're together. So anyway, loved it. Awesome. Pick it up, even though we just got a Spider-Man number one a couple years ago. Don't let that scare you off. Uh, Next up, A Train Called Love, number one, written by Garth Ennis, drawn by Who Gives a Crap, it's written by Garth Ennis. Uh, Mark Dos Santos, I believe, is the penciler. And uh, this is a love story written by Garth Ennis, which means we get uh, assassins with weird accents and the Ku Klux Klan and swearing and sex and just bizarreness all over the place. If you like Garth Ennis, if you like his work on The Boys, or of course The Seminal Preacher, uh, this is awesome. Check it out. Garth Ennis writes a love story. To get a taste of what is coming our way in the Marvel, the all-new, all-different Marvel Universe, pick up Marvel Point One, which is out today. This features uh, short preview stories, new material. They're not uh, giving you, actually, pages of future books, but we get a Rocket, Raccoon, and Groot story. We get a S.H.I.E.L.D. story with Agent Coulson. Uh, Venom, Carnage, and Daredevil, and Crystal of the Inhumans are all in here, along with the Maestro and the Collector from Contest of Champions. Uh, This was better than I thought it was going to be. I I really enjoyed it. I want to read Charles Soule's Daredevil now. Um, I also am interested in the Inhumans book, and the Rock and Groot story was great. Um, So for kind of a a taste of what's to come, you want to pick up Marvel Point One. And also starting this week is a new wave of what-ifs These from Marvel. These are uh, all tied to Infinity, but don't let that throw you off. They're still cool. Uh, they're all written by Joshua Williamson, who we really like uh, on Nailbiter and Birthright, and I think something else I'm forgetting. Uh, but the first one is What If Infinity Thanos? And this is what if in order to win in Infinity, they essentially had to let Thanos join the Avengers. 
And the other is a What If Infinity in Humans, uh, which is about interactions between Black Bolt and Thanos and essentially how far Black Bolt is willing to go to, uh, to secure the safety of his people. And this features one of those cool What If geek moments where you're like, well, what if this character's powers and this character powers work together? What would happen? There's one in here that I did not see coming that was super awesome. Another preview book of sorts, it's Avengers number zero from Marvel, which gives you new stories, preview pages, not preview pages, but a preview via a, via short stories, short news stories of Avengers, Uncanny Avengers, A-Force, New Avengers, and Ultimates. So this will get you primed for all of those series. Uh, my two favorite stories in this book were the Avengers story written by Mark Wade, and that features the Vision and Scarlet Witch, and Uncanny Avengers written by Jerry Brown. Jerry Dugan, sorry. <laughs> Jerry Dugan. <laughs> Jerry Dugan. Um, which is kind of, it's Deadpool like you haven't read Deadpool before. Um, he's still sarcastic and such. Deadpool's going to be part of Uncanny Avengers. But he's on a top secret mission for Steve Rogers. And there's kind of this this emotional respect that Deadpool has, that Wade has for Steve, that kind of comes to light in this and really enjoyed it. Um, all the other stories were solid too, but Avengers and Uncanny Avengers stood out for me. Can't wait for those. So if you're an Avengers fan, you want to pick up Avengers number zero to see what's coming our way soon. Uh, next up, we've got Survivor's Club over from Vertigo. This is the first book in their kind of massive relaunch, bringing out like a dozen titles before the end of the year and trying to make Vertigo cool again. It's written by Lauren Burks, Burks, uh, Burke, and uh, drawn by Dale Halverson. And this is the story of a bunch of people who something awful happened to in 1987, all separately awful things, and they come together to fight one of these awful things. Uh, it has some elements of slasher movies and classic kind of sci-fi stuff, and it's really cool. There's a quote on the cover from Joe Hill, creator of Lock and Key and son of Stephen, Stephen King. King. Uh, brainy, ambitious, and delightfully scary, Survivor's Club is a throwback to books like The Sandman and Hellblazer that made Vertigo a legend. Them's pretty strong words, but the book is cool, so if you're into those kind of things, Vertigo, Hell of Blazer, Sandman, give it a look. And horror. I thought, in addition to the classic horror, I think that there, there are modern horror elements, too. Like, mm -hmm. it, there's a scene in there that reminded me, I've never seen this because horror movies make me pee my pants, um, of The Ring. Mm -hmm. um, it looked like one of the characters from The Ring, and it was kind very of. weird. Anyway, or Ringu, the if you the like ending the was, The ending was version. bizarre. The ending mm -hmm. had me going, what just happened here? And I, we'll see what happens. And I say, for a first issue, that's sometimes yeah. what you want. Yeah. All right, The 800-Pound Gorilla of the Indie World is Paper Girls, number one, written by Brian K. Vaughn, artwork by Cliff Chang. It's awesome. Awesome. Uh, also set in the 80s, 1988, uh, the morning after Halloween, you have a group of teenage girls that have paper routes, and they run into each other, and they end up kind of teaming up to keep each other safe as they as they run their routes the morning after Halloween. And then kind of some Stand By Me, War of the Worlds action happens. So they're billing it as Stand By Me meets War of the Worlds. I totally see that with this. Um, but the characters are... Devon does an amazing job making us like these characters in one issue. Mm -hmm. um, so I, my wife read it. She liked it. I loved it. He liked it. Brian K. Vaughn, Paper Girls, number one. Get it. And the first scene in the book uh, shows one of the characters' bedrooms, and she has a Monster Squad poster oh, on her wall. She also has a Depeche Mode poster on her yes, wall. Yes, it is awesome. We love the <laughs> Yes, as soon as yeah, I saw the Monster Squad poster, I'm like, ah, Josh is going to love this book. <laughs> uh, last, uh, next up, we've got uh, Laura Croft and the Frozen Omen from Dark Horse. Uh, this is a new Tomb Raider series. And it's written by Karina Bechko with art by Randy Green. Uh, we love Karina's work on all, everything she does, pretty much. And she's doing a great job at making um, the series feel distinct from Gail Simone's run, but still be very identifiable and have Laura be likable and awesome. And uh, this gives us almost like an Indiana Jones thing, there's, which is sort of the Tomb Raider jam, uh, hopping around to different things, seeing adventures, and I liked it. Finally, just a uh, quick public service announcement that there are two second issues out this week where we loved the first issues and the second issues are just as good so don't skip them the first up is plutona by jeff lemire and emmy lennox again this was kind of the group of teenagers i'm going to say stand by me again <laughs> it was the stand by me kids who find a dead superhero in the woods and what happens next really really am enjoying this book um and also public relations number two is out issue number one was only two weeks ago and we raved about it. Uh, I know it was hand-sold to a lot of people locally here. 
second issue just as solid actually I think I, I laughed more in the second <laughs> issue as they told the story of how the children all went missing uh, in that kingdom and you definitely want to check the back uh, for a nice ad for the shackle box which was very funny yeah if, uh, if you're a little leery about checking out an indie humor book go to your local shop read the back cover of public relations one or two and if you like that back cover and you will you'll like the book <laughs> very enjoyable also out this week Awesomeness incarnate in a coffee mug with the Nelson and Murdoch Attorneys at Law logo on it, and of course their slogan, bringing you justice without fear. That will be my new cup next week when we do <laughs> our episode. Uh, we did do a Periscope broadcast uh, yesterday, so Tuesday of this week, and that is the plan. We'll do a Periscope where we preview the week's new stuff. Uh, we're still debating on the time. We did it at 4 o'clock Eastern, 4 p.m. Eastern, and I may play with the time a little bit, see if we can get some more viewers on board. So follow us on Twitter at Alter Ego Comics to be kept in the loop on when our next Periscope is. And we should be doing it, as I said, Tuesdays to give you a preview of what's coming out this week. That's it. If you like the episode, give us a thumbs up. We've got a huge day ahead of us here. Gene Lun Yang is going to be here. He's speaking at a local school. He's signing here, and he's running a teacher's night uh, for us to talk about comics in the classroom. So we have to get ready for that. And if uh, I, <laughs> by the time you see this, it'll be over. But uh, it should be awesome. If you're a time traveler. Yeah, if you can travel back in time, come back here Wednesday, October 7th. It'll be awesome. Have a great week.